Hello, my name is Faisal Khan and welcome to the question and answer series. Today we will be talking about what is fractional ownership. So come, let's learn with me. So fractional ownership uh, means that multiple people own a single asset such as a vacation home and share the cost and usage rights. So for example, if you have a home and it's valued at $100,000 and 10 people decide to buy it equally, then everyone owns $10,000 worth of it. Um, they can share it. Um, they can share, you know, every 10 days, uh, one person could have it and so forth. They could share the maintenance cost. It'll be divided by 10, et cetera, et cetera. That's what fractional ownership is really about. Each owner has a percentage of ownership and can use the asset for a certain amount of time each year. This is assuming you're getting a house or something like that. It's like sharing a toy with your friends, but with a fancy property, right? I mean, that's, that's, that's a typical way of describing what fractional ownership is. But I want to talk about a very specific kind of fractional ownership. The ownerships that we were just discussing, the, for which you, you saw the definition, were really related to things like, you know, cars and planes and, you know, boats and aircrafts, etc., and apartment and holiday homes. But I want to talk about fractional ownership from investing in real estate or stocks or gold. How does that work out? How does, how does the economy work with that? What does what, what the mechanics of that look like? So let's dive in a little bit deeper into it. So, you know, we all know you can own something whole, right? I mean, you can go and buy a car on the whole. You can go buy a gold bar on the whole. You can go buy a house on the whole. You can go buy a yacht on the whole. You can go buy a stock certificate on the whole, etc. And, you know, land, stocks, gold, these are all great assets for investment. Problem is, they're expensive. Again, real estate, who doesn't want to own real estate? Who doesn't want to own stocks? Who doesn't want to own gold? But if you look at your pocket, you may not have the money for all that. So the problem is that they are expensive and you cannot buy any of these unless you have the money. Um, you know, and, and let's also say that these are appreciating assets, right? These are appreciating assets. And if you cannot buy this thing, then it's a dilemma. So how do you solve this problem? Well, what if... What if there was a solution? And that solution is, what if you could buy a fraction of the investment? So rather than buying the whole chunk, you buy one little square. Rather than buying the whole thing, you buy one little cube. Rather than buying the whole thing, you buy just one part, one fraction of it. And that is what fractional in ownership is all about. So let's just give you an example to sort of uh, let you understand what and how powerful this concept is. Let's say there's a share of a company and it's worth $100, as mentioned over here, right? $100. And the minimum you can buy is 100 shares. So if you multiply the $100 with the 100 shares, it's $10,000. That's the price of the minimum lot. That means you have to have $10,000 in order for this company to sell you their 100 shares, which is worth $100 a share. And let's also assume that the rate of return on these shares is for, for let's say, 15%. So that's a pretty attractive rate. And you weren't in on the action. But how? You don't have $10,000. Maybe you got $16. Maybe you got, you know, I don't know, $30. Maybe you got $300. And you want to keep putting whatever you want towards this and sort of have some sort of a, you know, skin in the game. So how do we solve the problem? But what if someone were to buy one lot, i.e. the 100 shares at $100 per share, and then sell the fractional ownership of that lot itself by pr providing, let's say, 10,000 subshares. So let's do the maths to make it easy. And, you know, we are not going to go on, for this purpose of this demonstration, we will not go into the details as to who buys the lot and how do they make money, etc. Maybe I'll do a a video on that sometime else, some other time. So you've got, you know, 100 shares at $100 each, that's $10,000. So the total lot shares, in, in the total lot shares, not the total shares, the total lot shares, 10,000. So price per lot share, it's 10,000 divided by the 10,000 lot share. One lot 
share is going to be $1. That's it. That's fractional ownership. So now we went from $100 down to $1. Yes, it's giving you one ten thousandth of an ownership, but now you have ownership. So by being able to buy $1 share of the lot, you now have, as I said, one ten thousandth ownership of the share slot. This means you can now have the same access to ownership as the person with the $10,000 itself. You would also have the same access to the rate of return on the investment as a regular shareholder at 15% per annum on every dollar invested or in accordance to your fraction of ownership. That is pretty important. So now, rather than standing on the sideline and looking at it and saying, hey, you know, wish I had the money, I wish I had the money, I wish I could buy, you know, $600 worth of shares or $30 worth of shares and I keep putting $30 worth of share every weekend, etc. I wish I could do this thing. Well, now you can. So why is this important? Here are the six reasons why fractional ownership is super, super important. Access to markets. If you have access to greater inclusion, which is affordability, you know, this is the great thing. So there are many people in the, let's say, the, the community that cannot access these instruments, these financial instruments. And now they can. Why? Because you have access to markets, greater inclusion, because the cost of ownership, the barrier to entry is so low, it's as low as a dollar, they can include themselves. Easier liquidity. It's easier to buy and sell a dollar's worth of share versus, let's say, a million dollars worth of shares, right? So a dollar worth of share is very easy to buy and sell. And because it's only a dollar and because it's only fractionalized, there will be other small buyers and sellers who want to trade with you. It's easy to invest with small amounts. You know, people have small amounts to invest. A person has got, you know, 60 bucks sitting in a, in a cookie jar. It's not doing anything. It's just sitting there. It's not earning any money. But with that $60, if they could invest it into some sort of an equity or gold or real estate or whatever it is, that then gets money. It, now they have ownership. It's better than sitting in a cookie jar, right? So low cost of ownership. Whatever you want to do, the cost of ownership is going to be super slow, super low because of the fact that there are so many, 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 many people who are able to partake. And because of that, you, lo you lower, you don't lose out, but you lower the cost of ownership to down to a dollar, down to 30 cents, down to 50 cents, whatever the market and however, however you have uh, shaped the lot. Shared maintenance and management costs, this again comes from the same uh, example of having a boat or a car or a vacation rental or whatever it is, the costs, management costs of maintaining a fund, etc., are all divided. Remember, I said someone buys the lot and then sells it for you. They obviously do it for a management cost, and that's how the management cost will be divided uh, over onto you. It takes a lot of static cash and brings it into an investable instrument. So this is what I was talking about when I say that there's a lot of money that is sitting in the economy that's not doing anything. It's maybe sitting in a book, a bookshelf, in a in a in a in a piggy bank. It may be sitting in some old cigar box, you know, with other cash in your own wallet, or maybe in just in the bank doing nothing. But here it is where you're able to take that static cash out, those coins, the proverbial coins on the couch, right, or whatever it is, and take them out and be able to invest. And that makes a huge, huge difference. So with public blockchains, millions of assets can now be put on the blockchain that were previously not possible before, right? So the example I gave of, you know, 100 shares, and then they are $100 each, and then you make a lot all this can be put onto a blockchain. You can put this specific lot onto the blockchain, give it 10,000 you know, uh, lot shares, and then trade those lot shares on a blockchain so that everyone can see. They can be fractionalized for greater transparency. The proof of ownership would be there. Minuscule buying power is needed in order to partake onto it because you can bring it down to whatever. You, can, you don't have to even make it one ten thousand. You can make it one one hundredth of thousand, whatever it is. You can say, you know what? You can make it one in a million because you can say every share is going to be worth one cent. You can invest and buy one cent's worth. And that would be fantastic. So now if you have every week or every day or every hour, you could actually invest 40 cents, 50 cents, $32, $8.16 into whatever 
the uh, you know the, the asset is that is being uh, put on the blockchain. So minuscule buying power, super super important. New opportunities to gain uh, to buyers as never seen before. Obviously, if you have never, um, you know, you can get access to buyers. You can you can say, okay, listen, you know what, inflation is getting to you. I'm going to create this index of eggs and platinum and gold and hay and pork bellies and meat and wheat and uh, Ford shares and IBM shares and Apple shares and the S&P 500 and you can put it on the blockchain because it, the move, it, it won't be as volatile as such and you can bring it down. So you can create as many opportunities as you want. You know, new instruments are being fractionalized as never before. The example I just gave you is something that you were not able to do uh, previously without you know the blockchain you had to either own all of these and then put really a lot of money into it and only offer it to a very certain segment now we can offer it to all segments actually opening new markets for financial products and services so you know you actually open new markets and what do i mean by new markets um they can be investment you know, vehicles that can be made for six months. They can be investment vehicles that could be DCA enabled. There could be investment vehicles that could compound themselves. There could be high risk and low risk. There could be, I mean, you can have so many facets, it's not even funny. And this is the best part that I like. Worldwide market because of crypto. Not only can you sell it in your local geography, and if you're allowed to sell it, you can sell it anywhere. Uh, you can sell it in you can you can sell it in uh, Australia, New Zealand, Africa, all the fifty four countries in Africa. You can sell it to Asia, GCC, Latin America, North America, wherever you're allowed to sell, you can sell it. Relatively easy to launch. Again, a lot of new hedge funds are being formed this way because they're now putting their things over here and they're letting you know they're, they're making some really amazing, amazing products and are launching them. Anyway, so I hope this gives you some form of semblance, you know, and now you know what fractional ownership is. As always, if you have any question or comment, please do let me know, you know, in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer. Thanks for watching. Till next time, take care. This is Cecil Khan, signing out.